So when I was talking to the guys over at Midwest Industries, uh, because I noticed Troy had a really cool lever action 4570, he directed me to uh, Mad Pig Customs. And, and, and this is the outcome of our conversation. This is a 14.5 barrel with a Ranger Point Precision Comp pinned and welded on. So I have an overall length of 16 inches from the barrel. This holds four plus one in a pipe. And I'll start to break down some features of it, why I went with this particular configuration, which probably differs a lot from what most people have seen or what you desire in a normal 4570. Let's talk about this Ranger Point Precision Comet Muzzle Brake completely blended into the gun, pinned and welded to make overall 16 inches. And here's why I went with this. I have shot 26 inch barrel uh, 4570s along with 18 inch that were ported. After shooting a variety of loads through both of those guns, I quickly realized I need the ported gun. And then I also realized that when I was getting into 1800 feet per second, that that was uh, very noticeable. Different noticeable because I thought it was going to be kind of like my 12 gauge when I run Hornady uh, 2,000 feet per second slugs. Well, when I do that, there's so much more metal there on a 12 gauge. For, for whatever reason, that, that doesn't bother me. Out of a 4570, to me, it's very noticeable. And I wanted something that was going to tame the gun down, especially seeing how I was going to shorten the barrel. Now, a couple things that are happening here. I'm running some of those same loads that I was telling you about. I haven't had a chance to chrono what it is coming out of this particular gun. We're all smart enough to know that if a round uh, was going uh, 1,800 feet per second out of an 18-inch gun, when we chop off some barrel, we're going to lose some bullet speed. So that in of itself is kind of taming that particular cartridge down, and this break is doing a phenomenal job. So I'm shooting loads just to give you a um, kind of a thought process running uh, 350s that are into the 1500s or uh, 1100s. Same thing with 405s, 420s, uh, some uh, 425s, and I'm even running some 1500 feet per second 525s out of this gun. I wanted a bigger cartridge and I wanted the uh, speed to be somewhere between 13 and 15. And I will say this gun is chewing them up. Like that's that's what I'm loading this particular gun with. Now, if you're not familiar with a 4570 and I don't have a ton of experience on it, ain't like I'm out here cowboy action shooting all the time. I will say that the Trail Boss, so the other cartridges, uh, like a, say a 405 uh, loaded to 1100 feet per second, it's a Cadillac. These things are really nice to shoot out of this particular gun and very comfortable. So if you want a big cartridge um, and you want to play with the big boys just a little bit, this is a phenomenal way to go. So I'll break down some other features on the gun and, and kind of again go through the parts of what, what I was looking for and what works best for me. Let's talk about some other features that are on this gun. The first that most people kind of see right away is this rail, M-Lock rail specifically, done by Midwest Industries. And you can see how many different places you have to select from to mount something to. And in fact, if you can't figure out how to mount to this rail, it probably shouldn't go on here. I have a QD cup that's done by Mid Midwest Industries as well, but other manufacturers will mount to this. And a couple things to remember is that this rail is sold separately, so you can go and purchase that over at Midwest Industries if you want to spruce up your uh, 4570 Marlin. On the right-hand side, this quiver is done by a company called Hoptic USA. And I like these... Uh, these shell holders, they hold a couple extra rounds, and especially on a gun that only holds four in the tube, I wanna have two at least at the ready right there. So it really works out well for me. 
You'll see them in the precision community a lot. Guys will run an extra two on the side of the gun. So it's it's not just this gun they do it for, they do it for a wide variety of other weapons as well. The sight system on here is by a company called XS. You'll see that the rear right here and the front, and the front's a little fat. These aren't national match style of sights, uh, and this gun is not a national match style of gun. So the way they did these sights and configure them work perfect for, for this setup. The rear is adjustable both elevation and windage. So that is a, a, a an advantage, especially if you start playing around with uh, different types of uh, loads that are out there on the market. I wanted a durable red dot. I went with Hollow Sun for this gun, and I thought, what a great way to test durability on this Hollow Sun optic. And, and that's because this gun's got a lot of thump to it. This is their titanium version. If you don't know a lot about this version, one of the things that I like is the battery life with the circle and dot it's a hundred thousand hours with the dot it's two hundred thousand hours and then of course there's an auto mode which basically as soon as it detects movement it automatically turns on so for me this is a perfect gun for the elements that are out here that you can see behind me and for this particular platform i'm pretty excited to run it and uh and push it and see you know is it really going to hold up the way i want it to the trigger on this gun is done by Ranger Point Precision as well. It's a 2.5 and it's a very crisp break. I have a Magpul QD cup at the rear end of the gun because I like that two point configuration and I typically run a Vickers Blue Force sling uh, on most of my guns. Now, let's talk about the real money maker here. This isn't just take a bunch of parts and put them on a gun and it's a custom gun. This is somebody spending a lot of time wrenching on your weapon. And the action job is amazing. You can't go pick up another um, non-custom gun and expect to feel the same thing. It's not gonna happen. The guys over at Mad Pigs did a phenomenal job. The loading port, that's usually my biggest grievance. The loading port is so nice to be able to finally get around in there and not get your thumb stuck in it and or just feeling grit and metal on top of metal. I mean, this thing got Cerakoted and then you can tell he got in there and we re reworked this entire gun again. So phenomenal job by the guys over at Mad Pig Customs and a couple things that I wanna leave you on. This configuration was built for me. This is a custom gun for me, for where I live, for the elements that I'm in, and for what I wanted to utilize it for. However, you might fancy 357 Magnum, 44, 30, 30, whatever it is. You might want a 18 inch barrel or a 16 inch barrel or no break or a break or threaded as well because you're gonna run a can. So you can basically, it's like Burger King, you call them up and you can get it any way you want. So again, just something to think about. Check out the guys over at Mad Pig Customs. This is a standard 95 Marlin with a straight grip, straight lever, as opposed to the Mad Pig. One of the common mistakes that people make when they're shooting a lever gun is when they work the lever, they actually follow it down and then back up. And you notice what happens to the gun, it goes down and back up. The way to cut out some of that movement is to actually just push the lever straight forward, straight back, you can see how flat the rifle runs at that point. So we're running the Mad Pig 4570-95 Marlin. Now I'm gonna have worked the lever the way I talked about, down, back up, kind of exaggerated. I'm gonna give you two shots like this so you can see what it looks like. Movement down, back up, now it's straight line. And I think you can see the difference between those two shots, how fast that lever moves.